Starting off number 10, we have the earthquake machine. Sometimes accidents happen, which is why it's important to have a team who can have your back. Tesla was known for being a risk taker and innovator, and you can't take risks without causing some damage sometimes. Comes with the territory. Tesla had patented a steam powered mechanical oscillator that would vibrate up and down to generate electricity. He built the machine in 1893 in his laboratory in New York, and one day he thought, hey, I want to see if I can tune the oscillator to the vibration of the building I'm in. Bad idea. The whole thing almost came tumbling down. During his test, Tesla started hearing cracking as he was turning up the power and soon all the heavy machinery started flying about the place, hence the name Earthquake Machine. Tesla had to take a hammer to it in order to stop it from bringing the house down. Obviously, someone had to call the police over the event and his team had his back. The entire team got quiet as Tesla explained that it must have been an earthquake, but no one knew that he'd accidentally turned his oscillator into an earthquake machine. Coming in at number nine, the Flizz. You know that one of the safest parts about riding a bike is the fact that you can get into any sort of accident and you're not attached to it. You can kind of just fly off and jump off before you land in a mud puddle or scrape your knee or whatever. Another great part of a bike is that it has pedals and gears so you can move much faster than if you were running or walking, which is kind of the idea. Even if you're out of shape and you haven't done a lot of cardio, like the people who get up at 4 a.m. and go for runs, oh my god, those people are like on another tier, they're like gods, then um, you can definitely go really fast on a bike if you want to. And what on earth is a flizz? <laughs> this thing is what happens when you mix a jolly jumper with a bike and are willing to look embarrassing for everyone to see. The Flizz is a bike with no pedals, so you have to push with your feet like a Flintstone. And now this obviously sucks because you wouldn't really be able to move very fast at all. They also built a harness into it so you can hang in there like you're some sort of baby Bjorn. Usually when you invent a new thing, the goal is to try and make it better than the last version of said thing instead of making it worse or really stupid, so I don't think the guy who strolls in on the flizz is going to have a swarm of men or women around them being like, oh my god, marry me, I love you, because they look so sexy. They'll probably be looking at him being like, what? Is he okay? And how do you go uphill with this thing? You have to just run up the hill as you're attached to a bike? What is the point of being the bike then? In our eighth spot, we have bat bombs. Yeah, not bath bombs, bat bombs. This next one is not only terrifying, but also deadly. When it comes to warfare, people can get pretty inventive. Imagine you're stalking past enemy lines in the dead of night, when all of a sudden, a web-winged furry creature swoops in and drops a bomb right at your feet. Bat bombs were an experimental weapon developed in World War II, and they are exactly as they sound. It was a bat with a bomb attached to it. This would detonate on or near enemies. The plan was developed and submitted by Lytle S. Adams, a dentist from Irwin, Pennsylvania. He presented his idea to the White House just two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. And they liked it and the project was greenlit. The doc assembled an oddball team, including a pilot turned actor, an ex-gangster, and an ex-hotel manager. The project was disbanded in 1943 because it was surpassed by a deadlier project. Stay tuned for that one later on in the list. Coming in number seven, we have the Urban Baby Window Cage. <laughs> I can definitely see how this is appealing. Like, you want to make sure your baby gets a lot of fresh air, but you don't have time to take them for a walk when they're young. The Urban Window Baby Cage was basically a chain link cage with a pillow inside of it. So you could just plop your baby inside and go, look, a bird. Jimmy? Apparently everyone back then would have been totally fine with Michael Jackson dangling his baby inside his window because that's what they all did, apparently. The purpose of this contraption was so that your baby could get a little fresh air because you don't want your baby to get all stuffy in your New York apartment that's the size of a shoebox. And this was in a time when elevators were both scarce and the chance of them killing you was much higher. I think Tower of Terror, but real life. So walking that potentially very chubby baby up and down 30 flights of stairs doesn't seem very fun as just hanging him outside a window so you can feel the sun in his face and hear all the slurs that New York construction workers offer to the patrons on the sidewalks. If your kid ever gets out of line, you can just throw them in the cage for a timeout. You know, that's uh, this is this is why we should forget this. It's not a good idea, guys. Let's just stick with like jolly jumpers and, and uh, cribs that are inside. That sounds like a better idea. In our sixth spot, we have the hydrogen blimps. 
Hydrogen blimps are labeled as one of the worst inventions of all time. Basically, it was like a big balloon in the sky. It would be pushed by propellers, and guess what they would put into the balloon to make it float? Hydrogen. Hydrogen was cheaper and more readily available, so they used it. Just there's one tiny issue with that. It was highly flammable. But they would pile people into this blimp that was fueled by hydrogen. And sadly, they would explode. In 1937, the Hindenburg, a German airship, caught fire and crashed in 36 seconds. It was very sad and very disastrous. But that wasn't even the first time that one exploded. Just after the Hindenburg, that's when people were like, okay, maybe this isn't safe. Now, history should never be forgotten. But maybe let's just never bring back hydrogen blimps, okay? Coming in at number five, we have plastic. I acknowledge that plastic has helped us get this far. It has been an important part of our development as a species. But just like when a young adult who has to shed their trauma that made them funny, but keep the funny, it's, it's time it's time for us to move on from the thing that is choking our planet. Like if you go outside right now and get a box of tea, the tea will come in a box that is wrapped in plastic. The box is already a container for the tea. Why are we double wrapping it, you know? I know the purpose is to increase the shelf life, but maybe we shouldn't be keeping things on shelves that long. Maybe? I don't know. We should seek out healthier food that doesn't last as long because it doesn't have as many preservatives. Thus, it would be stupid to wrap it in plastic. Just wrap it in paper or pour it into my hands. I don't know. Just do it. Or have no packaging and, and everyone just goes to bulk barns and puts it in glass jars and everything like that. I think that's a pretty good idea, but you know, who knows? The plastic. It lasts a little too long, let's just say that. In our fourth spot, we have the Brazen Bull. This is one of history's most horrific inventions. The Brazen Bull was a torture device used in ancient Greece around 560 BC. A seaside colony called Ocrygus was ruled over by a man named Phalaris. This device was commissioned for him. He wanted to turn torture into music. His court sculpture created this unique nightmarish piece. It was a hollow sculpture of a bull with bells and whistles attached, and there was enough room for the victim to be placed inside of it. The bull would then be placed over a roaring fire, and instead of screams, it was designed to sound like the grunts of a bull. Now, some say this invention was a myth, but famed poet Cicero states that, in fact, the bull did exist and was used. This remains one of the most evil inventions in history. Coming in at number three, we have the trico system. There are plenty of ways to get rid of hair in places you don't want them to be. There's waxing, shaving, electrolysis. But this one invention deserves to be mentioned just one more time before we let history completely forget it. Never do this again. The trico system was a hair removal device that became a must have in every salon in the 1920s. And actually worked. It would remove the hair painlessly and effortlessly. All you had to do was sit at a mahogany desk and face a small window. When the flip was switched, there was no burning, just a slight hum from the machine. But it had some horrendous side effects. Yes, it would remove all the hair, but soon men and women would develop cancerous ulcers, carcinoma, and death. The reason? They were using x-ray technology, which is, as we know, radioactive. It would be administered to the skin for a few minutes and require anywhere between 15 to 20 treatments to be effective. X-ray technology was used for a variety of skin treatments around the time and even in the late 1800s, like for ringworm and eczema. But when the trico machine was released, however, there was no mention of what the technology they were using was. They were just like the trico miracle, you know, just picture like a typical 1920s ad. And the person administering it wasn't well qualified and didn't know what it was either. They just were like, flip switch and it works. Clients were just marveled that it worked so well until it slowly burned their faces off. Of course, hindsight is 2020. How they were to know, how they were to know. Let's just put this embarrassing, dangerous blunder to the side, shall we? In our second spot, we have Agent Orange. This next one we're going to talk about should kind of be remembered so that no one ever does anything so awful ever again. Agent Orange was a pesticide that was responsible for 400,000 fatalities, disabilities, and half a million birth defects. It was invented by plant biologist Arthur Galston in 1943. 
He created it as a way to help accelerate the growth of soybeans in places with a short growing season. But in large doses, it actually destroyed crops, and the U.S. decided to take this technology and abuse it. During the War of Vietnam, they sprayed the land, and 4.5 million acres of crops in Vietnam were destroyed by Agent Orange. And any exposure the Vietnamese and US, Australian, and New Zealand soldiers had to this pesticide came with deadly consequences. It caused an abnormal amount of miscarriages, extreme birth defects, cancer, and skin conditions. Some of the land still can't even be used to this day. It's very tragic and scary. Coming in at number one, we have the atom bomb. If the name Robert Oppenheimer doesn't ring any bells, maybe this will. Coming in at number one, we have the atomic bomb. Ah, uh, see, there it is. Robert Oppenheimer invented the atomic bomb and the first one that successfully detonated created a mushroom cloud 40,000 feet high. What people did with this new invention, however, stole an unfathomable amount of lives and opened doors for even more deadly weapons. It also led to one of the most terrifying standoffs in history during the 1960s called the Cuban Missile Crisis. The USA and Soviet Russia were caught in a standoff, both with nukes pointing at each other, waiting for the other to press the big red button. Thankfully, neither did, but many countries have nukes in their arsenal ready to strike whenever they want, and they're also still used in a lot of battles and war today. Considering how much damage was done to Nagasaki and Hiroshima due to the detonations of Fat Man and Little Boy in 1945, oh man, I hope that day never comes, and they just should just get rid of them. Like, no country should just have them. Because we definitely know that it will lead to the destruction of the world if they're ever used. We just should make an agreement that, get rid, we forget, destroy all the ways of making them. Just, let's get rid. Albert Einstein was the man who prompted the USA to invent the atom bomb in order to combat the Germans in World War II. He believed the Germans were working on the bomb as well, but he found out too late that that wasn't the case and they weren't, they weren't even as far as he thought they were. He immediately regretted his decision, which is why the atomic bomb makes our list of inventions we should all forget. Just get rid of it. He's not the only one who wished it never existed. Um, he's not the only one who wished it never existed. We should just get rid of it. Starting off this countdown, we have the Iron Chair. Imagine the Iron Maiden, but in chair form. Basically, this was a torture device used in the Middle Ages. Victims were placed onto a chair that was filled with hundreds of sharp spikes. There could be anywhere from 500 to 1500 spikes. They were strapped into the chair, and when their restraints were tightened, the spikes would dig into their flesh. And they often left the victims there for hours, even sometimes days, just suffering. Sometimes there was a hole on the seat and then a fire was lit below them. But the most common way this chair was used for was actually psychological torture. The victim was often strapped in and then would have to watch another person die in front of them. It was either you confess to your crimes or you die from the chair or die another painful death like the person you saw die. This device was used until the late 1800s in Europe. In our ninth spot, we have the mousetrap pistol. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You guys already know the drill. So this was an invention that seemed like a good idea at the time, but in the end it was found faulty for a number of reasons. So in 1882, a man named James A. Williams from Texas decided to create a trap, and I quote, by which animals which burrow in the ground can be destroyed. He then took inspiration by burglar alarms from the 19th century, which was basically a pistol rigged on a contraption that would go off when someone opened a window or door. He thought that if it worked for humans, it would work for rodents too. So basically his invention consisted of a revolver or pistol attached to basically a mouse trap. When the mouse set it off, the weapon would go off. So you see how problematic that would be? It would kill the mouse, but also take out chunks of your floor. And imagine if your foot accidentally triggered that trap. Ouch. So you can see why this invention never really took off. In our eighth spot, we have the blood powered lamp. Okay, the award for the strangest invention goes to this one. The blood powered lamp is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lamp that was powered by your blood. It was also called the Dracula bulb. It was created by a man named Mike Thompson from the Netherlands. And he designed and created it not too long ago, just in 2007. You know, a time where we have electricity. So 
I don't know why he thought this was a good invention, but it is kind of cool, so I'll give him that. Anyways, basically, the lamp contains luminol, which is what forensic scientists use to see if there's any blood at crime scenes. Luminol reacts with the iron in blood, and as a result, it creates this bright blue glow. So, this guy thought it would be a good idea to make a lamp out of luminol. Only thing is that you need to cut yourself every time that you want to use it. Basically, to use the lamp, first you mix an activating powder, then you break the ball, you cut yourself, and then you add your blood in it. As a result, the lamp will start to glow. Like I said, it's kind of cool, but also kind of really unnecessary. Coming in at number seven, we have the Pair of Anguish. This was another disgusting medieval torture device. So the Pair of Anguish, sometimes called the Choke Pair, was this pear-shaped metal device that you never want to be subjected to. So basically, this device was inserted into a victim's <clears throat> downstairs area or their mouth. Then they could turn the screw attached to this device and the pair pieces would bloom, basically expanding and it would stretch your openings. It was often used to get information or a confession out of someone. Basically the device will get so uncomfortable that you'll either cave in or it'll rip your skin apart. What's sick is that they didn't want to use this device to kill someone. No, no, they wanted it to just stretch them apart slowly to cause immense pain that lasts for hours or even days. In our sixth spot, we have the Scold's Brittle. This terrifying looking mask thing is referred to as the Scold's Brittle. The first recorded use of this device was back in 1564 Scotland. Shortly after, England started using them as well. Basically, this mask was a form of public humiliation and torture. Basically, women were forced to wear this as a form of punishment for behaving immodest or rude, or if they were accused of infidelity or witchcraft. So this mask would be locked on over their head so they couldn't remove it. Then there was a spike mouthpiece attached to it so they weren't allowed to speak. They then had to walk around in public wearing it. It was meant to inflict pain on the person while simultaneously causing public humiliation. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Iron Maiden, and I'm not talking about the band here. Chances are you have heard of this disturbing invention. Basically, it was a coffin-like device that was lined with spikes. The victim was then placed in the coffin and then the executioner would close the door. The spikes were then shot directly into the victim's body. But here's the thing. They specifically positioned the spike so that the victim wouldn't die immediately. Instead, it would be a slow and painful death where they just slowly bled out. That is terrifying. Also, who was responsible for cleaning that device? Cause that would suck. Coming in at number four, we have the spike collar. So picture the Iron Maiden and now picture it around your neck. That's basically what the spike collars were. A collar with spikes all on the inside. It was then placed on a victim and the spikes would dig into their necks. What's worse than the discomfort is the fact that they wouldn't be able to lay down or sleep. They also couldn't eat or drink, so they would just suffer with this thing on for days on end. For prisoners, after the collar was placed on their neck, it was then fastened with ropes to the four walls in the room. The prisoner would stand in the middle. If they moved even an inch in one direction, the spikes would impale them so they would have to stand incredibly still. In our third spot, we have the rack. Although this invention doesn't have a scary name, don't be deceived, it is very gruesome. This was a popular torture device from medieval Europe. Basically, the victim would have their ankles and wrists tied to this device so that they were spread open. Then two executioners would crank the gears and the machine would slowly pull their limbs in the opposite directions stretching them farther and farther apart until eventually mm, they were ripped right off. I'm telling you, people back in the day were sick. Seriously, imagine if we use this now for criminals. That would never fly. Moving on to number two, we have the dimple machine. Everyone is born with unique features. Maybe you have a butt chin or unique birthmarks or dimples. Now, if you don't have dimples, don't worry. There's a device that will give you some. Back in 1936, a woman named Isabella Gilbert created a device that will give people dimples. You know, if you weren't born with them and you were jealous. So basically how this works is the dimpleless person would place this contraption over their face. The device had two sets of knobs on either side of it. 
that would poke into your skin. It was believed that if you were to wear this long enough, then it would train your cheeks to create dimples on their own. I'm sorry, no, that looks terrifying and also painful. And at our number one spot, we have the electric smile. Back in 2011 in Japan, a very weird invention was made to help children smile. It's crazy. So basically, it forces kids to smile by sending electric shocks to the kid's cheeks. This causes the face muscle to contract and voila, you got a smile. This is wrong on so many levels, but it was targeted towards parents as a method to snap their kids out of a tantrum or to make sure they are looking perfect out in public. Here's the creepy part. The shock is so strong that the smile can last for days. And a side effect is that it can cause some twitching. Like I said before, this invention is just so wrong on so many levels. I can't believe it's a real thing. Starting off this countdown, we have Henry Smolinski. Henry Smolinski was the inventor of the flying car. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Well, at least he tried to create a flying car. But he's on this list, so as you know, it didn't quite work out for him. So Henry, along with his partner, Hal Blake, created this by pairing together a car and a plane. He took the wings of an aircraft and configured it onto a car. As you can imagine, they had quite a difficult time with this. During the first test, they experienced engine failures. In 1973, they encountered trouble with the plane wings. On September 11th, 1973, Henry and Hal were taking their invention for a spin when the wings detached from the vehicle during a test flight. The car crashed down into a pickup truck and burst into flames. Apparently, a bad welding job was responsible for this. Sadly, the two inventors lost their lives. And at number nine, we have the chain smoker, and I'm not talking about the band here. This invention was created for those who wanted to smoke not one, not two, but 20 cigarettes at one time. That is lung cancer just waiting to happen. But it was pretty popular in the mid 20th century. So this invention was bad for a number of reasons. Number one, cigarettes can kill. Imagine smoking 20 at once. Think about what that would do to your teeth gums, skin, and lungs. Also, think about how expensive it would be to fuel that addiction. In our eighth spot, we have the breaking wheel. The breaking wheel was an ancient device used to torture and or kill prisoners. Typically, it was used during public executions. Basically, how this device works is it's a giant wheel with spokes. The person was then strapped to the wheel and then beat, or the wheel was slammed down on them. The most common thing would be having them lay on the wheel, and then the executioner would hit them. Their body was woven between the spokes of the wheel so that when they were hit, their limbs would give away and break. It's really gruesome. Either they were hit until death, or they were just left there after being badly injured to die a slow, painful death. Moving on to number seven, we have the beauty micrometer. This device was basically a way to make you feel really crappy about your appearance. So it was designed in the 1930s and was used as a beauty calibrator to see how beautiful you were and what areas needed more work. And those areas that needed work were where the makeup was applied. The machine itself looked like a medieval torture device with like screws and these weird strips attached to it. The machine itself was made by a beautician Max Factor Senior. Yeah, yes, a man telling women how to look. Anyways, this machine is terrifying and its users would often have terrible headaches after wearing this device. Coming in at number six, we have the mass shaving machine. And this invention is exactly what it sounds like. This was popular back in the 19th century. It allowed barbers to shave 12 men at the exact same time. This device would first coat everyone's face with shaving cream or whatever they used back then. And then there was a blade hooked onto it and it would go and shave the men's face. No, just no. Everyone has different face shapes. That blade could come down and slice your face or something. I'm just glad it isn't around today. I know everyone wants efficiency, but this invention could go wrong for a number of reasons. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the flatulence filtering underwear. This one has got to be the weirdest one on this list. Basically, if you're a person that has really bad gas, don't worry, this underwear has got you covered. Basically, if you toot, the underwear somehow filters it so no odor comes out. No, I'm sorry, that's just weird as heck. 
please let's not make this a thing next thing you know a company is gonna come out with like underwear that makes your fart smell like things like strawberries or marshmallows i don't need this becoming a trend okay like ooh, who has the best farts no moving on to number four we have the creeping baby if dolls creep you out then you would not be a fan of this invention at all in 1871, a man named George P. Clark invented this doll baby thing. His goal was to make a doll that crawls exactly how a baby does. But boy, did it turn out really creepy. So the doll's head, arms, and legs were made out of painted plaster. From there, they were hinged onto a brass clockwork body. The doll then moves forward by rolling along on two toothed wheels. But honestly, it just looks like a creepy robot baby. So not only is this doll terrifying looking, but it can slowly creep along. Yeah, no, just no. Let's just leave it in the past, no thank you. In our third spot, we have the revolver camera. Again, it's just as it sounds. Basically, it was a gun that would take a picture when you pull the trigger. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It was meant to take a photo exactly when the bullet hit the target. Okay, but don't worry, there were no bullets in the camera when they took the photos. Basically, in around 1938, this device was created. A tiny camera was attached to the underside of the barrel and the front of the trigger guard. It was attached so that every time the trigger was pulled, it would snap a photo. Now, there's no evidence that this gun was actually used. They only used it for trial photo shoots. And like I said, it was used without bullets. Or so that's what historians assume. Sadly, we don't know much about this invention and its purpose. Was someone trying to make something cool? Or did they want to take photos of their victims? Either way, that would be super bad to bring back. Uh, you can imagine why. Like, here, let me take your photo, and then everyone screams and runs away. Moving on to number two, we have the thumb screws. This was a common form of interrogation used in medieval Europe. If the criminal was not behaving or giving the information that they wanted, then they would resort to using this device. Basically, it was a vice that would clamp down on a person's thumbs or fingers. Then the vice was slowly tightened putting more and more pressure on the person's thumbs. Also, they were locked in place with a padlock, so they couldn't escape. They were left there until they made a confession. If not, their fingers were shattered. And in our number one spot, we have the head crusher. Just the sound of this invention alone is gnarly. And it's pretty self-explanatory. The device was basically a vice for the head. I know. I know, it's gross. So basically, it was a metal device that hooked onto a person's jaw and then head. Then the executioner would twist the handle and it would push the head and jaw together. And then you get it. I'm telling you, there were some pretty sick people back in the day. They had fun with torture. On top of that, some versions of this device had a little thing at the front to catch the victim's eyeballs when they popped out. Mmm. Yum. Starting off this countdown, we have the smile mask. In the wake of World War I, Budapest, Hungary saw a lot of their residents take their own lives. One way they thought they could handle this problem was through smile school. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It started as a joke by Professor Gino and a hypnotist named Bingso, but then it actually turned into a real life thing. Basically, it was a school that taught everyone about smiles and analyzed different people's smiles, like the Mona Lisa smile. One thing that they invented at the school was the smile mask. It was given to people with depression to wear and was believed to cure it. Basically, it was like a card with a painted smile on it that was then strapped to your face. It was thought that just by wearing a fake smile, it would automatically cure your depression. But in reality, it looks terrifying, like some sort of torture device from the Saw movies. I don't think this worked. If anything, it would have made the depression worse. Like, who wants to walk around wearing that 24-7? In our ninth spot today, we have the death ray, which is as terrifying as it sounds. Basically, Tesla wanted to create a weapon that could destroy entire armies from afar. It would be done by accelerating mercury isotopes to 48 times the speed of sound inside of a vacuum chamber. Then it would shoot a high velocity beam out and the beam would cause serious damage and could be used from a great distance. Tesla even said, and I quote, it will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla thought that this would be great for the governments. In fact, he pitched it to multiple governments, but he was constantly shut down. Now, the Soviet Union showed some interest and a partial test was conducted, but it didn't go as Tesla hoped. 
which I mean, I think is a good thing. Can you imagine people using this weapon during the wars or even nowadays? It would be very disastrous. Number eight, the thought camera. Nikola Tesla is like the grandfather to Black Mirror. Like he, he is that show. Though Tesla came up with the idea for the thought camera in 1893, he only spoke about it in 1933. He told the Kansas City Journal Post that his mind had been stewing on the idea of a camera that could read mental imagery. Tesla said, and I quote, I became convinced that a definite image formed in thought must by reflex action produce a corresponding image on the retina, which might be read by a suitable apparatus. Now, if it be true that a thought reflects on an image on the retina, it is a mere question of illuminating the same property in taking photographs and then using the ordinary methods which are available to project the image on a screen. If this can be done successfully, then the objects imagined by a person would be clearly reflected on the screen as they formed. And in this way, every thought of the individual could be read. Our minds would then indeed be like open books." Unquote. I know sometimes I consider myself an open book, but I definitely don't want all my thoughts out there. Like I need the filter. Like my brain just goes everywhere. So I don't want all people seeing that stuff. Moving on to number seven, we have the apparatus for producing ozone. It's as if Tesla was psychic and knew that in the future we would have serious issues with our ozone layer. Why? Because he had a patent for an apparatus that would produce ozone. The apparatus would force air between a pair of electrically charged plates to trigger a reaction. Because if you didn't know, ozone is created by combining oxygen with electricity. I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Anyways, back then, Tesla was concerned about the smoke evil, like the burning of coal polluting the air and causing illnesses. So he thought that if people used this device in their homes, it could purify the air. Well, here's the thing. Ozone in the upper atmosphere protects us from the sun's UV rays. But in our living room, it could seriously harm us. So I'm glad this invention didn't go through as well. Number six, the Wardenclyffe Tower. Though the tower was actually built, it was dismantled in 1917 after it was abandoned by Tesla years earlier. Tesla was a big dreamer and needed even bigger funding backing him in order for any of his ideas to be realized, which he got. The Wardenclyffe was a project backed by financier JP Morgan, who gave Tesla 150 grand to build this massive mushroom shaped tower. It was supposed to be capable of transmitting messages and images to ships at sea across the Atlantic, but Tesla had an even bigger idea wireless energy. He believed that he could use radio and microwaves to light up New York by transmitting millions of electricity through the air. However, this idea, should it have been successful, would have crippled other energy sectors that JP Morgan had his little fingers in, so he refused to fund Tesla any further. So Tesla sadly abandoned his project in 1907. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the remote controlled boats. In 1898, Tesla participated in an electrical exposition at Madison Square Garden. While there, Tesla presented the idea of a remote controlled boat using a wireless command post, so basically like a controller. He used this device to change the boat's direction and people were like, whoa, what the hell is going on? He's a wizard, he's using magic, how is he controlling it? He was so far ahead of his time that he even created an anti-hacking mechanism so that no one could get control of the boat. Now he tried to sell this idea to the US Navy. He pitched it saying that they could have pilotless submarines or torpedoes, but they weren't interested. Honestly, he was a brilliant inventor. His inventions were just way too advanced for his time. Now here's the thing that makes this invention mysterious and spooky. Tesla had other plans for this invention. He didn't truly want to make remote controlled boats. No, no, no. He wanted to warm people up to the idea of robots. More on this shortly. Number four, an artificial tidal wave. This next invention was designed to move the seas, if it ever set sail in the first place. Tesla wanted to use physics to prevent war and believe he could harness the power using the sea. In 1907, New York World reported Tesla's new military invasion, which again was supposed to be using wireless telegraphy. The machine was designed to trigger explosions within the sea that would create massive tidal waves big enough to capsize enemy fleets. The purpose would be to make the navies of enemy countries useless. But the invention never came to fruition, but it certainly foreshadowed another detonation device that would bring a world war to an end. Any guesses as to what that might be? And at number three, we have the humanoid robots. 
Now remember the whole robot thing I just teased about? Well, Tesla wanted to invent humanoid robots. He wanted to develop a race of robots or mechanical men that would do all the hard work for us. At the same convention in 1898, Tesla showed off part of his robot invention. He asked audience members to ask this device mathematical questions. The device would solve the questions and provide the answer by blinking the lights on its antenna an appropriate number of times. He was really pushing for this automation, like having things move and think on its own without an operator. Not only was he hoping to make humanoid robots, but also wanted to use these devices to control organs or to create self-driving vehicles, etc. He pitched his idea to the military, to the US government, and to Great Britain, but no one picked up on it. Again, kind of good because we don't need a race of robots wiping out the human race. Coming in at number two, we have the electric powered supersonic airship. Who doesn't dream of leaping into the air and flying? Tesla was no exception to this and from a young age was fascinated with flight. It was only a matter of time before he came up with his own idea of how to get around the world. When the Warden Cliff failed, he turned his eyes to the sky. Using his knowledge of electrical and mechanical engineering, he dreamed up a supersonic airship. He first discussed his ideas in July 1919 in Reconstruction Magazine, in which he described a craft that could travel 8 miles above the earth, aiming for passengers to travel from New York City to London in 3 hours. He was yet still obsessed with the idea of wireless electricity and believed the craft could be powered by it, meaning they didn't need fuel. Tesla still had never given up on the power plant aspect of the Wardenclyffe and believed if enough were built around the world, their power supply would be unlimited. We have gotten pretty close to realizing Tesla's dream with kinds of crafts we have today, <laughs> like the ones that were flying over our building today. But Tesla never realized the dream himself. And in our number one spot today, we have the UFOs. Did you know that Tesla came up with a UFO spacecraft that looked an awful lot like the ones we see in alien movies? In fact, people believe that he was in contact with aliens and they told him how to invent this craft. In 1928, Tesla created a patent called the world's first flying saucer. Not only would it defy gravity, but it would have been the fastest aircraft out there even to this day had they successfully created it. So the UFO resembled both a helicopter and an airplane component wise. There were no wings or propellers, giving it that UFO spacecraft vibe. Had it been created, it would have changed the world of aviation forever. When Tesla built an experimental station, he said he picked up some strange signals from space. He believed these signals were from aliens and that they provided him with a code that translated to 1234. He believes they sent out a code in numbers because numbers are universal. So could it be that he actually did make contact with aliens and then they provided him with instructions on how to build this craft or what? Starting off this countdown, we have the Judas Cradle. Whoever invented this torture device was sick. So basically, the victim would be placed into a waist harness that attached to ropes. Then the victim would slowly be lowered onto this pyramid-shaped seat. And it's got a nasty, pointy top that gets inserted up their yahoo. The victim was then slowly and painfully stretched open by this device. Eventually, their body would tear and they would be impaled. Doesn't that just sound peachy? This instrument was used until the late 1800s in Europe. I can't imagine how painful that must have been. So let's not bring back that form of torture, ever. In our ninth spot, we have the guillotine. I'm sure you all know about this execution device. If not, pay attention in school, okay? So this consists of a razor sharp blade attached to a rope. The victim's head was placed in the middle of the frame and then the blade was dropped and well, you know, the head would be severed from the rest of the body. At least it was quick and easy. As a result, they considered it to be the most humane method of execution. But still, let's not bring this back, okay? Okay. Moving on at number eight, we have the social credit system. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to smash that like button. So this next one is literally a Black Mirror episode in real life. Basically, there is a system in the works that will record your behavior and hand out points as a result. They will monitor your online presence as well as your financial wealth and how social you are. The better this all is, then the better your score will be. People then can check those scores like future employers and those with better scores will do better in society. Believe it or not, but they are already using this in China. 
They are currently enrolling everyone into a national database and ranking every citizen. Like I said before, this is literally like that one episode from Black Mirror. If you've seen it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and you'll also know why it's a bad idea. In our seventh spot today, we have the tub and I'm not talking about a bathtub. No, no, this is another torture device used in medieval ages. So this involves placing the convicted person in a wooden tub only their head would be sticking out. Their face would then be painted with milk and honey, attracting flies and other insects. They would then feast on the person. You thought that was bad? Well, they would continue to feed the victim so they would, you know, have to do their business in the bathtub and then sit in their own waste. But eventually they were basically eaten alive by insects, which is horrifying. In our sixth spot today, we have the automatic tip requester. This next device was invented in 1955 by a man named Russell E. Oakes. It was designed primarily for hotel bellhops. So basically what it is, is this creepy hand that would strap onto their back. It literally looks like an arm is growing out of their lumbar spine. But anyways, after they helped the guest, the guest could then tip the bellhop by putting money on the creepy hand. The money would then fall into a cash box that was also strapped onto the bellhop. Here's the thing though, if the tip was too low, a no sale sign would pop up and inform the tipper that their tip was not enough. Which I mean, if you ask me, is really embarrassing. Like imagine tipping someone and they're like, oops, sorry, that's not enough, like we actually need more. So awkward. So I can see why that flopped. Not only that, but the hand on the back just looks really freaking creepy. Like, am I staying at the haunted mansion or what? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the heretic's fork. Basically, this was a torture device that consisted of a wrench type device that was strapped to a victim's neck. Except both ends were super sharp. One end was pushed under the victim's chin, the other against their sternum. They were then strapped in and hung from the ceiling. Now, they had to keep their head up, because if they dropped it, then this device was going into their chest and their throat. So I'll say it so you guys don't have to. Disgusted? Seriously. Ugh. Moving on to number four, we have the Whispering Grocery Store. Like, this just sounds creepy, and it is. So what if you were out shopping, and all of a sudden you heard someone whispering in your ear? Wouldn't that freak you out? Well, companies are trying to make this a thing where they have ads playing in grocery stores. So when you're looking at a product, the voice will be telling you all the reasons why you should buy that product. Uh, that sounds an awful lot like mind control to me. No, thank you. Now, a company called the Holosonics has invented something called the audio spotlight system. Basically, they are tiny speakers that can be used for this in-store advertising but you have to be standing in the right place to hear it. It's not just like a bunch of ads playing at the same time through the grocery store's big PA system. No, that would be hectic. This is just like, no, just think of like going to a museum and listening to something that tells you about the piece of art that you're looking at. That's what it is, but 10 times creepier and totally unnecessary. Moving on to number three, we have coffin torture. Back in the day, people had some sick torture inventions. Seriously, it's like they had fun inventing the most gruesome ways for people to die. This being one of them. Coffin torture involved placing the accused inside a caged coffin. They're locked in so they can't move at all. Sometimes they were even stripped naked before being placed in there. And then they were hung somewhere for everyone to see. The time they were stuck in there depended on their crime. Most were just left there to die, falling victim to dehydration or malnutrition. Some would even be picked to death by birds and insects. And again, they couldn't do anything about it because they were completely immobile. Coming in at number two, we have the knee splitter. And it's as bad as it sounds. This was another pretty gruesome torture device from the medieval ages. Basically, the device was two wood blocks connected by two large screws, and it was lined with sharp spikes. This was then placed on the front of the knee and then directly behind. Then it was turned, and the blocks would move closer and closer to each other. Then the sharp metal would just dig deeper and deeper into the flesh. You get it, okay? It would completely destroy the victim's knees, and it would probably be super painful. And in our number one spot today, we have the TV that watches you. Technology is getting way too advanced. Like, people need to calm down. 
Well, Verizon has a patent for this smart TV that watches your every move. It's terrifying. It can detect your movements, sounds, and reactions to what you're watching. It then records it and creates ads that are geared specifically towards you. No thank you. Isn't that terrifying? Like, you won't have any privacy anymore. I swear, you can Google toilet plungers once, and for the next week, all the ads on your computer are gonna be for toilet plungers. It's already intense. But this? This has gone way too far. Not only that, but like, let's say you and your spouse are fighting while your TV is on. It's gonna detect this and legit start making ads for like couples counseling. I'm not making that up. It's insane. This is too far. Just stop. Just let us watch TV in peace. Starting off this countdown, we have the gas resistant stroller. When you go out for a walk with the little guys right now, you might throw them in a stroller. It's probably the easiest way to get from A to B without having to wait for the little kids to catch up. They always want to stop and pick up a rock that's smooth. Like, what is it with smooth rocks that seem so cool? Anyways, back in the day when there was a concern about chemical attacks, a gas-resistant stroller was made. The gas-resistant stroller was what looks like a metal coffin on wheels. It was all the rage when mustard gas wasn't yet a war crime. It would pair nicely with a gas mask that your mom could wear as she pushed you through the streets. Honestly, it's pretty terrifying, not gonna lie. I'm glad that this isn't a thing anymore. Over to you, Rachel. Coming in at number nine, we have Thomas Midgley Jr. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. So he was an American engineer and chemist. Sadly, when he was 51 years old, he contracted polio, but that didn't stop him from inventing. In fact, he created a system to help others lift him out of bed. He did this with a complex system of strings and pulleys, but in 1944, he became trapped in the ropes and was strangled to death by them. He passed away at the hand of his invention. In our eighth spot, we have William Bullock. William Bullock was an American inventor who created the rotary printing press in 1863. This invention helped revolutionize the printing industry greatly. The press could print up to 12,000 sheets an hour, and later it could print as many as 30,000 sheets an hour. Sadly, William passed away while trying to repair it. His foot ended up getting crushed under the machine after trying to kick a pulley into place. He survived the incident, but later his foot developed gangrene after getting infected. He passed away while getting his foot amputated. Coming in at number seven, we have Henry Winstanley. Henry Winstanley was the inventor of the first Eddystone lighthouse. The lighthouse was eight feet high and 24 feet in diameter. His other designs failed, but he had high hopes with this one. In fact, he wished, and I quote, to be in the lighthouse during the greatest storm that ever was. And well, his wish did come true. On November 14th, 1698, the lighthouse became operational. Here's the thing. Over the years, the lighthouse began to deteriorate. One night, there was a huge storm warning and Henry would get his wish to be in the lighthouse during a storm. But the lighthouse was no match for the powerful storm. That night, the lighthouse collapsed, taking the lives of Henry and five other men. Moving on to number six, we have Marie Curie, a great chemist who won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1903. Curie is known for a number of things. She discovered the elements radium and polonium. Due to her work and research, she is credited with inventing radiography or x-rays. Sadly for her work, she was often exposed to radiation. This was before they knew the dangerous effects that ionizing radiation has on the body. She would often do her experiments in a shed with no safety measures. And apparently she used to carry around test tubes containing radioactive isotopes in her pocket. She even kept them in her desk drawer. So yeah, that's not safe. In July of 1934, she passed away from a plastic anemia as a result of her exposure to radiation. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Alexander Bogdanov. Alexander can be thanked for the invention of blood transfusions. That has saved countless lives. But he started doing blood transfusions to see if there were any rejuvenating effects. All throughout the 1920s, he was running experiments on this to try and achieve eternal youth. He had 11 blood transfusions and was adamant that it was helping him. He claimed it improved his eyesight and stopped his balding. Sadly, on his 12th transfusion, something went wrong. He exchanged a liter of blood with a physics student but they had traces of tuberculosis and malaria in the blood. After the transfusion, his body began shutting down. 
On April 7th, 1928, his heart failed and he passed away. In our fourth spot, we have Sylvester H. Roper. Sylvester was responsible for inventing the world's first motorcycle. How it worked was it was basically a bicycle with a steam engine attached. For 13 years, he used his invention. It was cool, but it didn't go very fast. In 1896 though, he got it to go up to 40 miles per hour. On June 1st, 1896, Sylvester took his invention out for a ride to show off his new speed. However, while on the ride, he actually suffered from a heart attack, or so they believe. He wiped out and then passed away. To the witnesses around, they say the vehicle went off course and then crashed into the sand. But according to the autopsy, he had a heart attack, lost control, and then crashed. In our third spot, we have Horace Lawson Hunley. Horace Lawson Hunley invented the submarine, but it was never as successful as he wanted. His first design ended up trapping seven sailors underwater. They all sadly passed away. So he went back to working on it to make it bigger and better. But his second model was a fail again. The submarine sank in Mobile Bay, Alabama. But that didn't get him down. He made another model. Sadly, this model took his life. On October 15th, 1863, Hunley decided to go on board of the submarine while running another test. Sadly, it sunk again and Hunley, along with some crew members, were trapped underwater. Some did manage to survive, but Hunley did not. In our second spot, we have Valerian Abakovsky. He is responsible for inventing the Aero Wagon, which was a propeller-driven rail car. His goal was to use it to transport officials quickly across the Soviet Union. The car had an aircraft engine attached to it and propeller traction. It could go up to 87 miles per hour. On July 24th, 1921, Valerian, along with some other men, decided to take the vehicle from Moscow to Tula to test it out. They successfully reached their destination. However, they never made it back. On the way home, the aero wagon derailed and seven out of the 22 men on board passed away, including Valerian. And in our number one spot, we have Franz Rieschelt. On February 4th, 1912, inventor Franz climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower. His plan was to jump off and use the suit he made to fly down to the ground. The suit he wore was a wearable parachute and resembled just a big cloak. At first, he said he would test the suit out with a dummy, but that day, for some reason, he said he was going to make the jump himself. Although past attempts with the dummy failed, he was still determined to try his invention out himself. Around 8.22 that morning, he was on top of the Eiffel Tower. He stood there proud and then stepped off the ledge. Sadly, the parachute folded around his body immediately and he plummeted down to the ground. He left a 5.9 inch crater in the ground. And as you can imagine, his injuries were gruesome. But apparently an autopsy revealed that he passed away from a heart attack during his fall. So when he hit the ground, he was already dead. Mm -hmm. 